This is Twit. The AI world is pretty incestuous, which is why this deep seek R1 was so interesting because this is an AI that came out of uh, China. They claim it was developed for very little money and is doing reasoning that they, that seems to be as good as uh, O1, the uh, premier uh, AI from OpenAI. So that's why that was the other story. We could have got. <laughs> <laughs> it, you know, it, it, it does make me wonder, um, you know, the Biden administration has been had been uh, really tightening the screws on China's AI sector uh, by limiting its access to NVIDIA chips and other chip technology. Um, is that just forcing China's AI sector to get smarter than it's, us, essentially? That's exactly yeah, the my, point from a Wired's uh, article about this from uh, Jay Yi Yang, who, who says, unlo- uh, let's see, um, Deep Seek's success points to an unintended outcome of the tech cold war between the U.S. and China. U.S. export controls, as as you pointed out, uh, have oh, severely curtailed the ability of Chinese tech firms to compete on AI in the Western way, that is by infinitely scaling up, buying more chips, training for a longer period of time. As a result, most Chinese companies have focused on downstream applications rather than building their own models. DeepSeek apparently uses Meta's uh, Llama model, which is a, I, I'm going to put this in air quotes, open model. It's not open source. It's just other people can use it, which is kind of what that means, even though they're calling it open source. DeepSeek has proven there's another way to win by revamping the foundational structure of AI models and using limited resources more efficiently. They did buy 10,000 NVIDIA chips to do this. It's funded uh, by a hedge fund billionaire. He, he uh, made a lot of money and decided that he wanted to start DeepSeek uh, it started as something called Fireflyer, a deep learning research branch of Highflyer, which is the hedge fund uh, I mentioned. Um, it's I think it's an interesting story, and people who've used DeepSeek say it's great unless you ask it about Tiananmen Square, because it is Chinese. Uh, it just shows that there is a lot of creativity, I think, in the AI sphere, and that there is no one way uh, to solve this problem. Um, it's very interesting. Uh, Liang, the founder, told a Chinese tech publication, the decision was driven by scientific curiosity rather than a desire to turn a profit. I wouldn't be able to find a commercial reason for deep seek, if you, even if you ask me to. It's not worth it commercially. <laughs> it must be nice to have so much money you could say, you know what we should do? We should spend it on NVIDIA cards. Basic science research has very low return on investment ratio, Liang said, when even... When OpenAI early investors gave it money, they sure weren't thinking about how much return they would get. Rather, it was that they really wanted to do this thing. It's pretty. It's actually very cool uh, that they've succeeded, although it does put into uh, doubt the U.S.'s policy to keep uh, these chips out of Chinese hands. Well, uh, I mean, even even if you were able to keep. Um, keep the Chinese from buying NVIDIA processors. One thing that we're increasingly starting to see is use of other types of processors. You know, the NVIDIA processors are great at effect, essentially brute forcing the problem. Right. Uh, but they're not, they're not actually that highly optimized for doing the very specific types of calculations. They, they, they do have, you know, like the Blackwell processor and, and others, you know, the previous generations have, tensor cores in them that are very optimized for this. But increasingly, as you get into these LLMs, what you need is, is something even more highly optimized for doing matrix matrix math. And if you can get to that, and that's you know, what we're seeing, increasing development of these matrix optimized, matrix math op- optimized uh, processors are way more efficient at, at doing the kinds of calculations you need to do to do AI um, at, with much less power consumption. And, Sam you know, Altman has to freak out, lower cost. though, when he sees this because he's the one who's raised all this money. He's the mm-hmm. one, one of the people spearheading Stargate looking to spend half a trillion dollars. These guys don't have anywhere near the resources and they don't have access to the hardware. Wired writes, 
Deep Seek, made, Deep Seek has also made significant progress on something called multi-head latent attention, MLA, and mixture of experts, two technical designs that make Deep Seek models more cost-effective, requiring fewer computing resources to train. In fact, according to the research institution Epic AI, Deep Seek's latest model required one-tenth the computing power of Meta's comparable Llama 3.1 to train. So there, you know, sometimes that's true, isn't it, in the world? When you have constraints, you, you get, you're forced to get creative and maybe even do a, a better job. It's very, yeah, it's absolutely. interesting. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, I thought that that's was where a, all the best engineering comes from, is ha having, having constraints. I, I thought that was an interesting and, and, and odd remark that uh, the, the quote that you read about uh, the guy saying, you know, basic research doesn't have a return on investment. I mean, that might literally be true uh, because by definition, basic research isn't designed to turn into a product. But I, I think some of the most important products of our lifetime and, you know, the last couple of generations have been sort of uh, have come out of accidental discoveries from basic research sure. right you know you bet you know se semiconductors and such so you know there's a there's a strong case to be made for funding basic research uh you know both at the government level and by um by private capital because you know that you're you know that somebody's going to get lucky and find something amazing that that nobody thought of we and, and of course you can Go ahead, Sam. If, if you can then, if you can let somebody else do that funding of the basic research, and then when they find something, then take that and create the applications, which is what it looks like DeepSeek is doing here to commercialize it. You know, if, if you can continue to rely on somebody else to do that basic research and, and give you those, those, those foundational layers that you can then build on to build technology applications, why wouldn't you do it? Especially, you know, at this point in time you know and then you know as you grow and and start actually start to generate some revenue and some profits then maybe you start doing some of your own basic research but also for, for excuse now, me if i'm a little cynical but i mean this is a guy operating out of uh communist china mm -hmm. and it is definitely in the chinese government's interest to show that it can still compete even with the sanctions placed on it by the united states so i imagine even if he's not getting any concrete remuneration for his research efforts there's probably support there's a little bit of support and encouragement and even maybe a, a medal in it for him who knows i don't know uh this is it, but it's also good if again we have to somewhat uh put some faith in what they're saying and they could be making this we don't know really and as always with ai you don't really know what's what's, what's going on <laughs> so there's a certain amount of trust here uh, but uh, Wired quotes a, a professor of university at the University of Technology, Sydney, Marina Zhang, who studies Chinese innovations. She says, unlike many Chinese AI firms that rely heavily on access to advanced hardware, DeepSeek is focused on maximizing software-driven resource optimization. They've embraced open source methods, pooling collective expertise, and fostering collaborative innovation. This approach not only mitigates resource constraints, but accelerates the development of cutting-edge technologies. So, bravo. I mean, right? We should all be in favor uh, of that. Uh, that's a good thing. Uh, by the way, they are releasing this model and giving it away for free. So, they are putting their uh, mouth where their money is. That doesn't make a lot of sense. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They're giving it money away. Money where their mouth is. You know, that's... Yeah, but they didn't... Yeah, well... They're putting their robot with the AI, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thank you for watching this little snippet from our big show, The News Roundtable, This Week in Tech. I'm Leo Laporte. Each week we cover the week's tech news, in-depth analysis, but it's also fun and engaging. You'll find it at twit.tv along with all of our shows. And if you want more, just hit the subscribe button and uh, we'll be sure to bring you a lot more great content. Thanks for listening.